but i think yesterday we ended with uh, uh, the abelian group theory and maybe we i just talk spend a little bit of time on the last part of it so what we excuse me system and just fixing okay Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. So yesterday we discussed that uh, when we write an abelian group, free abelian group, fi finite free abelian group, not sorry, finite abelian group, no free part. So since it is finite, uh, there is no free part. So then we said that it is uh, some C1 of C1, CD1. Then C2, C, uh, okay. So this D1 again, I, we write it as some P1, R1, C2, P2, R2, something like this we wrote. C, maybe I just make it, right now a part of it not full i'll come to it uh, let me just complete the notation ck c p part r k so this is one part so where uh, the subgroup p subgroup inside it and then other copies are also there similarly we will have the sum is over other primes okay Other components will not have any element of order P or any subgroup of or any subgroup whose order is divisible by P. So G we wrote it as a sum like this. Then we said, then this we finally said that C1, C2, CK are uniquely decided by or determined by the group G. Okay, and what was the argument we used? We said that collect all elements of G whose order divides P power I. And we said that suppose, uh, and these elements form a group, uh, is it form a P group, say of order P power Li. Then we, go, we formed a system of equations. This Li, uh, L1 was C1 plus C2, plus like this CK, then for the elements whose order divides P square, the order of the group is assumed to be P power L2. And then we said how L2 is equal to C1 plus two C2, like this, two CK. And finally we wrote LK equal to C1, two C2, and finally kck and then sir, we, yes so the notation that you have written above was c1 p2 power 1 plus direct sum c2 p, p square yes. yes so they are these are c1 copies of this group okay so this notation uh, z direct sum z is written as 2 z so two copies of Z, okay? Yes. So yeah, if you if you want, I can put a on the in in. You want this here, C one here. Oh, no, I was I was not saying for that. I was saying that these R one, R two, R one, two, three, like that. Yes. Oh, this one, two, three. That's right. Sorry. Thank you for the. Initially, I was planning a different. Uh, okay, that's right. This is one, two and here k thank you that is right <clears throat> since it was an additive notation i put c1 in the in the front rather than as an index but that is also fine you can put c p upon i mean to the power c1 that notation is also fine perhaps this is more standard you want that notation uh, no sir this works 
this works okay fine yeah then we what from this we said that uh, c1 up to ck are uniquely decided determined by l1 l2 lk right and therefore uh, the theorem which says maybe i go back to yesterday's uh, discussion a bit then come back here yeah so we <coughs> every finite abelian group is a direct sum of cyclic groups of prime power order and then we said that these prime powers are uniquely decided okay and then we uniqueness theorem is this and we just discuss the proof okay so uh, now uh, we have a question say c not c uh, yeah cyclic group of order say 6 plus cyclic group of order 8 okay so here this is a group this is a very easy very easy looking i mean simple minded group so i want to write this in two different ways the structure theorem we have two form one where i want to write it as some cd1 direct sum cd2 etc okay with such that di divides di plus 1 there is one thing another one is c some prime power p1 to the power r r1 like this Okay, so can you suggest how should I write this one? How will I go about it if I have to write in this form and then in the other form? A little bit of discussion we had before, but just I want to revise this one. So we can break C6 and C2 and right. C3. We can write it as C2, direct sum C3. Then C8 I cannot break, right? Yeah. Am, am I right? C8. It will remain like this. Then suppose I want to go for the first one. I have to, what is D1? What is the proposed D1? 2. 2. C2, direct sum with C3. Eight. I'll two. combine this to C8. So I'll actually directly write 8 times 3, 24. Is it okay? So first form I have assumed here. Okay, so this is related to this type where di divides di plus one. I have just two copies. Okay, so other one is, other one prime power is already, it is in that form here. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Only one copy of C2, only one copy of C3, one copy of C8, which is, Okay, if somebody wants, I one can write it to Q prime power. Okay. Now, uh, I have a, we want to also see uh, if I have this statement that I, we can write every finite abelian group as sum of, in a unique way, as a sum of cyclic groups of prime power order. Then claim is that it implies that this way of writing is also unique. Is it fine? This way of writing is also unique. So, for example, uh, suppose I have R1 copies of C, uh, P1, R1, sorry, not R1, P1 of suppose N1. R2 copies of P2, R2, like this. Suppose two of them only. To start with, let us see this one. So this example, can we apply on this uh, general situation? But just two of them are there. P1 and P2 are different prime. Then what will I do? How will I go about it? 
Uh, we can think? form a single group by combining P1 and P2. Yes. So what will be your proposed D1? So can I say without loss of generality, this R1 is bigger than R2. One of them is bigger, I am calling it R1. Is it okay? Yes. Sir. Yeah, then what is the choice for you? Then uh, by however amount it is bigger, we can so, take all those at the start. Okay. And by remain whatever remaining is, we can form a single group like how we combine C3 and C8 hmm. like that. Okay. So uh, what what is your proposed? Uh... Uh, the C, P1, N1. P1, N1. How much? How many? Uh, R1 minus R2 times. R1 minus R2? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. no, but I want this condition, right? D1 divides D2. And then, like, first, Suppose so I do not have are... this part. Suppose okay. I don't have this part. Then is it already in that form? Uh, yes, so they're all same. They're same. So D1 equal to D2 is okay. I see, I cannot combine P1 N1 with P1 N1, right? I'll not have a cyclic group. Oh, yes, sir. C2, did exam C2? It is already in that form. I cannot write CP4. C2, C4, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, so this is not a correct choice? Or you have an idea here? Can't we just say that two divides two, so we can just write it as C2, 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 C2? You are saying CP and N1? C P N one like this? Uh, yes, sir. R one minus R two times. Yeah, but you see the problem. I P two P one N one does not divide P two N two R two. Sorry, no, this is N two N two. So I can combine some of them. Okay, maybe what? Yes, let us sir. first see. So like whatever uh, remaining. Uh, R1 was greater than R2. So I took R1 minus R2 copies of P1 and N1. And then after that, yeah. I combined P1 and N1 and okay. P2 and N2. Okay. And so then because, will... because I, we can combine now in this case. One, if one of them, I can combine. Yes, P1, yes, N1, P2, N2. Is it okay? This is fine? Yes, sir. Okay. So you are suggesting that I write here, how many copies? Hmm. R1 hmm. minus R2 copies? Yes, sir. Okay. Then, uh, uh, C. Raising R2 copies of? P1, N1, P2, N2, like this, I will ha we'll have? R2 copies. R2 copies. Okay. All right. So then the condition is satisfied. And this is the only way, way right? This is the only way. Yes, sir. Okay. So if we have more primes and it may be repeated, for example, P1 power N1, P1, P1 power N1, N, N1 prime, P2, P1 power N1 double prime, and so on. Still, it is such a thing is possible, right? So please. I mean, maybe in the tutorial, one or two problems will be discussed in this direction. So what we want to say that, uh, that de this de in this decomposition also, de from what we have proved, D1 dividing D2 
this d2 dividing d, d3, etc. With this condition, the decomposition is unique. Okay. All right. So uh, this was the last part of uh, the last. You know, I wanted to talk about this part and say that uniqueness holds for uh, decomposition of finitely generated abelian group into product of uh, cyclic groups, CDI, and a free abelian group where DI divides DI plus one is unique, where D1, D2, DI, uh, D, DK are unique, D deter determined by, by the group. Okay, so we want to apply the theory developed over Z uh, to linear algebra, linear operators on finite dimensional vector spaces over a field. Uh, the main point uh, here is that the theory developed is over a ring, which is a principal ideal domain. Every ideal is, uh, oh, sorry, uh, is an Euclidean domain mainly. Okay, Z is an Euclidean domain. We can we have division algorithm. So let me just write it now. So we'll discuss an application. Two linear operators. We call that if F is a field, then the polynomial ring F square bracket T is a Euclidean domain. Maybe it was discussed in the uh, section of rings or chapter first uh, week. So we have <coughs> division algorithm here that we have division algorithm. That is, if we have ft gt in f capital ft the uh, polynomial ring of polynomials in t with coefficients from the field f where this gt is assumed to be non-zero polynomial and there is a there exist polynomials qt and rt uh, such that ft is qt times gt plus rt where this rt is either zero can you please complete this it is either zero polynomial or degree less than g. degree of rt is RT less, less than, than degree of by what i am dividing gt correct so this is this algorithm we use when we uh, apply elementary row and column operations, right? And therefore we could diagonalize. And we have applied this to over integers and hence we got a uh, structure of finitely generated abelian groups. Okay, so now the same theory can be now applied uh, for matrices with uh, coefficients coming from FT and hence on FT modules. So abelian groups are Z modules on whose structure we have studied. Now we are saying that why not we apply this to FT modules. Z modules we have understood, why not FT modules? So that is what we are going to do now because FT is also a noetherian because F field is a noise, F is a field, FT is noetherian. Of course, I know we also know that it is actually a principal ideal to me. So this is therefore in particular, FT is a principal ideal domain. 
so that any finitely generated FT module has a presentation matrix. Is it fine? Z is noidarian, that's what we used. Should I quickly again revise? So fi fi finitely generated F module V. So if you call it V, then V is generated by finitely many elements. So that, what does that mean? That is, we have a map from FTM, which is subjective to V and whose kernel is finitely generated. Again, you see FTM is a free module and therefore it's every sub module in particular the kernel is a finitely generated FT module and is free. Say finitely generated. So it is generated by W1, W2, WN. I'm repeating the same argument, nothing new. So that we have a map from FTN to W, which is subjective. And this V becomes FT M upon W, I mean isomorphic here, and which is same thing as FTM upon A FT N. What is A? Where A is given by WJ equal to summation AIJ. Uh, I should write EI. Okay, so uh, so these coefficients are belonging to now FT because my ring is FT now. Okay. So there's a theorem now. Let R is FT. Where F is a field. Suppose A is an M by N matrix, which is supposed to be, you know, which is appearing in the structure here. That it is the main reason we are why we are talking about this theorem. Then there exists Q, an invertible matrix, and P, another invertible matrix, Q of size M by M and P of size N by N, with coefficients from F, F is FT, each of which is in fact a product of what? Can you again complete product of what? I would expect some students to you know suggest me what kind of product it should be, P and Q. Please suggest anybody. What I want to write, I want to get a diagonal form of A. How do I get diagonalize A? By element. Elementary. Exactly, elementary row and column operations. So therefore, Q and P are obtained by as a product of elementary matrices. Elementary matrices. Such that the new matrix, which is Q inverse AP is a diagonal matrix, uh, coefficients of course from FT. Uh, should I write FT matrix? That may look slightly better so that you do not forget. Or R matrix, R is in the same as FT. <coughs> Moreover, 
if a prime is this matrix diagonal d1 t d2 t like this dk t then there may be some zero columns zero rows we can then uh, each di t is a monic polynomial such that d i t divides d i plus one t. So what is the point here? That monic polynomial. What do I mean by monic polynomial? Anybody would like to tell me? Monic, the highest degree coefficient is one. Coefficient is one, okay. And we can make sure that uh, di divides di plus one. Okay, so this is the analogous statement of what we learned before for matrices with integer coefficients. Okay, and what we are saying, the z is an Euclidean domain. There we use when we apply elementary uh, row and column operations, we uh, we use uh, division algorithm repeatedly, and it seems. Uh, that lecture is still we have for the field FT because FT is also an Euclidean domain where Euclidean map is the degree map. So therefore we can convert any matrix in that form, diagonal form. So let us write a couple of examples. Say uh, the ring is QT, Q the field of rationals. Matrix A is a T plus one t square minus one, t plus one whole square, t square minus t minus two. Then <coughs> apply some operation, say second row I want to change to second row minus uh, t one plus t plus one times the first row. Then First row is unchanged. Second row, first member, this first column, this elements become zero. And other part becomes t square minus t minus two minus t square minus t plus t square minus one. Please verify also. Then I want to apply column operation C2, then C2 minus t minus one C1. So then this will uh, change the second column and it becomes diagonal. This is now minus t cube minus one. Okay, so another column C2, I want to replace by minus one times C2 so that it is monic. See here, it is not monic. Minus one, I need to multiply. And you remember that it, this coefficients are coming from a field. Okay, so highest degree coefficient is always non-zero by definition, and it can be multiplied by a suitable element so that it, it is converted into one. Okay, so if I had five t cube minus one, then I would have multiplied by one upon five. You see that? One upon five is there in the field. So I could multiply, so I'm multiplying in this case minus one, which is there in Z, in the case of Z also, but here, if it were highest degree coefficient were five, I could I, I would have multiplied by one upon five, the column, second column. Okay. I did not pick a, such an example, but that possibility is allowed, is there. So, all right, so it becomes TQ plus one. Okay, so the condition, this is my, my now A prime, and that you observe that T plus one divides TQ plus one. This is correct, right? It does not divide. Yes. Huh? Sorry. This one does not divide. T the plus one does not divide. T square minus T plus one. T plus one. 
T cube yeah. plus T square. Okay. Yeah, minus so, plus one whole cube plus one. Can't hear. Slightly yeah. louder, please. Oh, okay, so minus one whole cube plus one also zero, so it is true. Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. <coughs> so, uh, uh, so here, uh, I mean, our responsibility is to find P and Q also. So, so A prime is Q inverse A P, where I need to say what is P. P is one. So, uh, is related to column operations. So I have applied here C to replace by. So I, I have to make some change in the second column. What is that? Minus T minus one, zero one. Then uh, next I, am, I have applied here, two places I have applied. This is column operation. This is another. Then I will multiply by minus one, the second column. One, zero, zero, minus one. So this gives me uh, one t minus one zero minus one. So p is this q inverse. I have only one row operation. The first operation here, you see. <coughs> so this one uh, second row is changed. So I don't have to worry about this first row. Second row is replaced by so minus here t plus one. Maybe I push a little to the right, right? This is Q inverse. All right. So here, maybe I just include a remark, which I said, but if A is a rational number, in particular, any non, non any, any field, then A inverse is in Q. So we are free to divide uh, by E. So we can always convert every non zero polynomial. So uh, non-zero polynomial, okay, but in polynomial in A into harmonic polynomial. Okay, by ap applying suitable column operation. So here, just again, I repeat here, I have multiplied by minus one to the second column. It could be one upon five if necessary. That's all. Another example. Uh, here uh, again, I take f r equal to q t. I mean, r t is also fine, but q is an, enough. All right, so a is this example is also in the book. So, what operation I will apply? Second color, second row I'll change. I will make this guy zero by subtracting uh, t minus one times r one. You see t minus one times t minus two is this, what this is the uh, two two uh, member of the matrix. So this becomes, T squared minus 3t plus 1. First column is unchanged. Oh, sorry. First row is unchanged. First column becomes t square minus. This term is t square minus t. So I hope you know, will do and verify this one. So, yeah, so there is a mistake here. Please correct. T minus one whole cube. 
then you get this one. Otherwise, there's a problem. Yeah, now this is fine. Then, then we apply column operations, C1 to C1 minus T minus one, C2. So column first column is now moved, changed. It becomes minus one, T square minus T, T minus two and zero. Again, uh, when I multiply by this, by T minus one, then uh, I know what it is. So there minus one remains. Then again, column operation, C2 replaced by C2 plus T minus two. Mm. C1. Then it becomes minus one, T square minus T, zero, T square minus T, T minus one. Sorry, minus two. So this is not minus, this is plus. Fine, this is all right. Which if I simplify, I get minus one, T square minus T, zero, uh, this term is t cube minus 3t square plus 2t. Further, uh, apply row operation r2, r2 plus t square minus 3. I don't claim that this is the only possible way of, of converting. I don't know whether there are other ways, but in general, I mean, it can be done in several ways. I don't know whether this is the shortest way, but this is one of the ways. And we are closer now. I'll just simply multiply C1 by minus one. So that column becomes one, zero, zero, T cube, three T squared plus two T. So here I hardly have to check anything because I have one, one here, you see, this term is one. So uh, it divides any polynomial. So condition is automatically satisfied. So I'll ask you to find question find p and q inverse okay i am not finding all met all operations i have mentioned and please combine them and get a get forms of p and q not forms exactly what they are okay <clears throat> thus we have a method of solving ax equal to b over ft this is what one thing okay a definition here <coughs> this definition is for any commutative ring uh, r is a commutative ring with unity n R module V is a cyclic R module if there exists an element in V such that the module generated by V, namely uh, lambda v, where lambda is coming from r, is equal to the entire module v. So, cyclic group, we know that there exists an element a such that n a, n i vary in z, produces every element of the group. Is is it, is, you know, every element is of this form, n a. And A we call A is a generator. So analogous uh, definition here, that now we are supplying the coefficient lambda from R, okay? So this, so this is a, yes, so please. The generated by capital V is actually small v, I think. Um, the module generated by small v. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. This is small v. Okay. So what we have said, our 
and R module B is a cyclic R module. If there exists a V in capital V, such that the module generated by small V, namely this, that is right, is exactly V. Thank you. So if V is a cyclic R module, and V is equal to the module generated by V. I mean, this notation I'm here using as module generated, like ideal generated we have learned. So similarly, this, this is denoted by this notation, module generated by V. And more generally, module generated by V1, V2, V1. So this kind of thing we have seen before, uh, V generated by uh, some set, and we also talked about pieces, okay? Then we have what a subjective map, a subjective module homomorphism from R to V, right? Some map V. What do I do? I send this lambda to lambda V. So that kernel of V is the module, it is an R module, kernel is an R module. So when you are talking about Schur's lemma, then at that time also this kind of thing we have discussed uh, is, the, is the module uh, what I of relations of V. And what is it? And it is, it is in fact uh, an ideal, sorry, an ideal I of R. So that what we get V is as an as a module, it's a module isomorphic to R upon I. Right? So this map is subjective. Uh, this is epimorphism actually, uh, such that this happens. All right, so uh, when it is a cyclic R module, is like this, that R upon I. This is what we have understood here, right? In particular, If R is FT, where F is a field, the ideal I, what can I say about the ideal I? Slightly more than that, we can say it is some ideal. It is generated by one element. It is a principal ideal domain. So I'll say it is generated from by some DT. So that V is isomorphic to Ft upon the ideal generated by dt. The module of relations in this case is generated by a single element. Okay, so that uh, V is generated by one element, this is one thing. But, but here we are saying that going modulo I, that I is also generated by one element. Okay. So let us now state analogous statement for structure of modules of our polynomial rings. Structure theorem of modules over polynomial things. Let R equal to Ft be the polynomial, sorry, 
the ring of polynomials. Ring of polynomials in one variable with coefficients from the field f. Then we are making two statements. Let v be a finitely generated, I'm abbreviating finitely generated as fg module over r. Then v is a direct sum. v is a direct sum of cyclic modules c1, c2, ck and a free module l where ci is isomorphic to r upon di t where okay where two times sir huh? and each di t divides di plus one t so before that i should also say monic condition di each di t is monic and again maybe i push a little and dit divides di plus 1t for i from 1 to k minus 1 and part b a finitely generated module over i is a direct sum of cyclic modules c1 C2 CK and a free module L where each CI is isomorphic to R upon DIT, where, so it is how this one, this statement B is different from A. Here we are going to say each DIT is a power of a monic irreducible polynomial. Each DIT is a power of a monic irreducible polynomial. The prime powers in part B are uniquely determined. Okay, so I hope now you can uh, you can compare the statement for finitely generated abelian groups and how it is generalized to finitely generated modules over a PID. And oh, okay, not a PID, modules over the polynomial ring over a field. Polynomial in one variable, coefficients from a field. So statements are analogous. Her, only here prime is replaced by irreducible. So by the way, in FT, uh, can I say that irreducible polynomials are irreducible elements? Is it right? Students, please respond. Prime elements. And therefore they are prime also, can I say that? Yes. Okay, so, but is it a general statement? Every irreducible is a prime and every prime is an irreducible. Are these the same concepts? 
only in UFDs. UFDs. So in particular here there is no problem. They are same, right? All right. So <clears throat> example. Suppose R equal to R T. So Q is also as good. If you like, you think of just Q. And let V be the R module presented by the matrix K prime, which we just talked about in the previous, maybe some 10 minutes back. So if I have A, then I then I can apply. Okay, maybe I just say A first by the matrix A. I have to see what is A. T square minus three T plus one T minus two T minus one cube and T square minus three T plus two. Okay. So this is the same matrix. If I hope I have not written incorrectly. <laughs> okay, so so then we know that uh, V is also described by A prime, which is one zero zero t square c t square plus two t. So why why I have written I could write, write directly A prime. But I'm, what I want to say that uh, uh, the process of diagonalization I am applying, and therefore, you know, according to this theorem, what is claimed, we get, namely, what the presentation matrix uh, is this, and what is the claim that it is a sum of uh, certain cyclic mod R modules. So, what is that? So. Again, recall that, uh, you know, presentation from the presentation mat matrix, I can draw first row and first column. Do you agree? Some generator V1 is there. V1 equal to zero. That is the first column. Meaning of the first column is, right? So therefore, V1 is zero. So I let me not talk about V1 at all. So I can simply drop it. Okay, so this is what we saw uh, over integers. The same thing I can apply here. I'll say simply recall that we can drop the first row and the first column of A prime. The, so that V is presented by the one by one matrix T cube minus three T squared plus two T. Observe that T cube minus three T squared plus two T is T, T minus one, T minus two. The cyclic R module is R upon T cube minus T T squared plus two T, or which is same thing as R. Okay, maybe I just write F T. F T upon T T minus one T minus two. So, as a what can I say now? Can I further decompose? I, we know something like this. But as what? I do not know whether you have seen this one. We have, I have not discussed. Have you seen this one? Is it fine? 
प्लीज रेस्पॉन्ड इफ देर को प्राइम और को मैक्सिमल मे बी आई राइट टी हियर कैन आई से पी टी टाइम्स क्यू टी इक्वल टू एफ टी अपॉन पी टी ओके या प्लीज रेस्पॉन्ड सो शुड आई टेक ए ब्रेक फर्स्ट प्रोफेसर सेक्टर आई टेक ए ब्रेक ऑफ सम फाइव मिनिट्स Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, okay. I'll take a break now. Five minutes break. You can stop then. Yeah.